The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantinus and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Feedsy has worked as part of the Blind Sporting Council approving grants for blind and vision impaired athletes, has walked the Kokoda Trail way back in 2007, so that's like an old hand of that Kokoda Trail stuff, and coached his kids' footy team. I mean, I'm assuming that's AFL, given, you know, we're, we're talking about an Adelaide-based or South Australia-based person. So thank you so yes. much for joining me on the show. Steve Hodel. Hey, welcome. Peter. Great to talk to you again. It's been a long time and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Not at all. We were just saying it has been a very many years of, since we last sort of, sorry, first um, met as part of part of an advice community and, and interacted and you guys were, I guess, early in the days of Feedly back then. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of the stuff that you're doing now. But before we talk about Feedly, let's just talk about you as a tech user. Mm-hmm. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I do. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it has to be the smiley face. I do that a lot, the smiley okay. face. And whether it's on an email, just the colon and the, the bracket or a smiley face emoji, I find myself using that one frequently. <laughs> so, nice. Nice. So yeah. sometimes you're kicking it old school with just the, the colon and the... <laughs> That's right. Sometimes kicking the old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love <laughs> Depending it. Depending on what you're using. Yeah, yeah. Correct. We remember when we didn't have actual picture emojis. We remember when you just had to do it with what, oh, no. what was on hand <laughs> on the keyboard, right? So then, okay. So when we all like live with and on our smartphones all the time, mm. um, I got together with some friends recently, and we we remarked how we wondered how in our twenties we managed to get together at clubs or anything like that because we didn't have smartphones. I don't know how we organised ourselves. So we all live these things all the time, don't we? So yeah, quite if, right. if you had to delete all the apps off your smartphone, which three would you keep? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question because you use multiple apps. But mm. I think for me, I love my, my gardening and my lawns and things like that. So I've got this app called the Beehive Sprinkler app. It's just got my little zones and I can turn uh, sprinklers on remotely when I'm away from home and I can just check on them to make sure that nothing goes untoward and, and dries off or anything like that. So, yeah, Beehive Sprinkler That's app. That's cool. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and probably another one, I, I think Facebook to, to keep connected. Yeah. I love um, being able to post uh, photos of getting together with family or friends and uh, things like that. So Facebook just keeps me connected. Mm-hmm. And probably from a, from a business point of view, we use a, um, a cloud bank, so uh, in, in Stripe. So I think just keeping on top of what's happening with the business, um, you know, is pretty important when you uh, are, are away from your from your office. Yeah, and it's nice. I mean, we we are in an environment now where 
you can be getting a lot of information and keeping your finger on the pulse with just your smartphone for your business. Like there's a lot mm. of tools now. I mean, we, in our practice, we use Slack a lot. And and so I can be overseas and I can still see what's going on and answer any quick questions. So it's so much easier than it used to be in that sense um, to sort of just keep in touch no matter where we are. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So let's dive into Feedsy. So for those that, and I think a lot of people will have heard of the tool, but just to give them a sense, let's go up sort of top level to begin with Mm -hmm. in terms of where you guys fit in that sort of advice tech or fintech or whatever space, what category do you fall under? Who are you normally lined up against? Like what, what sort of game do you guys play generally? Yeah. Thanks, Peter. It's really about efficiencies. Um, Advisors we know are really time poor and they either don't want to communicate or create newsletters um, or they don't know how to. Um, So we fall in that space where we fill that gap of providing content and automating the distribution of that content out to their clients in the form of a, a beautiful looking email and newsletter. Yep. Um, and just really uh, helps them with business efficiency. So we're really under that business efficiency fintech uh, space. Yep. And yeah, I guess okay. a lot of players are in that area, but we're specifically in the client engagement area of that business efficiency. And I'm betting that sort of covers over, you know, actually covers a lot of areas because while it sounds like it's just, oh, we just produce a newsletter, I'm betting that actually it ends up branching out into a whole lot of things because you want somebody to do something when they read the newsletter, where do they go, all that sort of thing. So I'm betting that the areas of a practice you help are much broader than just the newsletter. Is that right? They are because it sort of opens up into a, like a nice content piece that either the client or the advisor can share socially. It then sort of uh, amplifies what they do in, in terms of what they are and the ways they're trying to help um, clients. It gives them topics to talk to as well. Yep. We might cover a little bit more of that on, on how they can use video in, in terms of introducing their, their newsletter. Yep. Um, and also we've gone into really being a, like a two-way client engagement tool where we are on a quarterly basis asking clients to give feedback about their advisor, to rate them on how likely they are to recommend a family member or a friend. So that's based on all the client engagement piece. So it's not just sending a, a newsletter now, we are going a little bit more two-way where we get interaction back to the advisor. And I think that's where the magic happens. It absolutely is. And it's, um, you know, feedback's an interesting approach. We're just working on this actually for our practice. And the temptation, because ultimately what you'd love is a great testimonial, right? And that's what's fantastic. But the thing it is- It feels good getting them. Doesn't it? It, it feels yeah. wonderful. And and sometimes you do just get those out of the blue. They want to give you some great feedback and, and they're wonderful. But there's a whole lot of people that would tell you something good, but a testimonial sounds a bit formal and a bit weird. And it's a bit like giving a letter of recommendation. And suddenly mm. I've, I need to be a wordsmith. Like, you know, like there's a lot of barriers mentally. Whereas I find even for myself, if they just ask me for feedback, then it's like, oh, you just want my input then often what you're getting is something that can become a testimonial, but it's just, it's more relaxed. There's something more casual about feedback that isn't quite yeah. as intense as yeah, a testimonial. The, yeah, and the way we ask about that too, Peter, is we, instead of saying in those words, we don't say testimonial, we just say, if they rated you as a nine or a 10, there's a little follow-up question to say, oh, thank you so much. What in particular do you like about us? Yeah. So they are providing a comment and that then translates into a wonderful testimonial because they start thinking and talking about the way they like you as a financial advisor. And that makes the financial advisors feel great and yeah. proud about what they do. Yeah, absolutely it does. And look, we all need that a bit more of that. I think I think the whole being a martyr and plowing on because we love what we do thing is is actually selling ourselves a, a bit of a, a, a dog story there because we all need reinforcement, right? You just don't have this endless well of positivity. <laughs> Even somebody as upbeat as myself, um, <laughs> you need reinforcement um, of people going, actually, that really worked. That was, it was just wonderful. And, you know, that outcome was amazing. So I agree, even at having it merely, even if the first thing is all you're getting is some positive reinforcement. And, you know, interestingly, and I bet you can, sh- you, you've got some insights on this. Often they'll say something that surprises you that's the thing they like, right? It's not necessarily what you think it is, right? So. <laughs> So hearing that the particular thing that you just do naturally and don't even think of, they think is the best thing since sliced bread, that's valuable too. Correct. Yeah, and it's yeah. funny, when I read through the client testimonials, quite often it is, uh, we love the way that you communicate to us. You're always sending us information. And me being the supplier of a lot of that content and the regular newsletter, I can't help but think we've played a small part 
in yeah. helping them get those positive comments, which is rewarding from my business point of view because I love adding value to their business. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so fees, so a practice engages with you guys. Is Do you generally find that, and we're talking about efficiency and, and clearly it's, it's content and marketing, is it? it's falling into all those categories. Are you finding generally the... Um, the person driving this is the advisor or is it generally another member of the team that is the one that ends up taking this on board and sort of taking it further? Yeah, good question. I think the perception is that an advisor may need someone in their office to take ownership of it. Right. And that can be a hurdle with, with coming on board because I think, who in my business am I going to give this to? I don't have that many resources. I'm really time poor myself. Right. If I spend money on marketing, am I going to make busier? All those sorts of things. So with Feedsy, everything is completely automated. So an advisor can sit back and do absolutely nothing at all. And other than the fact of just receiving that email on a monthly basis and reading the content, so he knows or she knows what has been sent out. Yeah. Um, go a step above that. They might want to rearrange content and also add their own material. Yep. But in terms of um, who predominantly would do it, the one man or one woman advisor <laughs> yep. would, would be the person that would um, be drawn to feed you to say, you can really help me. Other areas, um, when a financial advisor has their own support staff, they might then get a little more proactive in terms of adding additional stories or additional content about what the business is doing Yep. in terms of adding a new staff person or a community right. event they might be a part of or things like that, or even yeah. um, writing some um, frequently asked questions about yeah, okay. things to help. Yep. So that's where I think when you have a, a person on board, a dedicated person, they can get more involved in adding very specific you know, content about what's happening in their business. Yeah, and depending on you know the size of the business, particularly um, when you are a bit smaller, it does like starting from scratch on these things can just be like, oh my goodness, and what articles, and what am I going to do, and what. Whereas if you can sort of view it more as this is going to happen anyway, so I've now got regular content going out, yay, you know, that's engagement, yay, and then, all right, I'm going to put aside some time where we can just add a layer to it. Um, that's powerful because it's, you know, if you don't get it done, it's probably not the end of the world. Um, mm. But if you do, it's only a small thing. And I mean, I could even see, and we were talking about video off um, off air before we pressed record, and and you could even have an, an introductory you know, little video at the beginning. So, oh, I'm so excited about this month's newsletter. There's this and this and this and make sure you do this. And like, it could just be a simple thing that um, positions what's going out. Um, you know, they can see you and, and engage further with the advisor or member of the team. Um, but the actual content itself, you guys have sort of curated and it's all sorted. Um, mm, that's right. It's funny, um, I, I've had multiple training sessions of late when I coach or, or teach an advisor or their staff about how to use feeds in. We always do that when they come on board to make sure that they, they can use it in the best possible way. I'll yeah. go through how to add their own content pieces or how to add video, et cetera. And quite often the response is, isn't that why I've got you for? So you supply all the content for me and just send it out? Well, absolutely it is, but I'm just showing that you can add it if yeah. you want to. And we do recommend that you do add some of your own content because it, it means the world to your clients. It does. And I think, because they're not necessarily coming to you for information. Right. And so I like the idea of them seeing you as, as, and when I say you, I mean the advisor or the principal as, you know, a curator of great content. Mm. So, so then create the, the positioning thing, which could be, I mean, it could be a minute, that video, it could be really quick, um, but it positions you as, you know, thought leader, uh, guru, you know, curator, and then the information comes after that. So there's sort of two layers to this stuff. And so that's why, um, you don't have to be writing all of this stuff yourself, to your point. You don't. You just don't have to. But I do like the idea of adding that layer. And also, you know, you, you know, the brain processes you on video as you write in front of that person. It sort of can't tell the difference, right? It still thinks you're right there. So it's yes. a bit like a podcast too. It's like, oh, I've had a, actually comments from the industry. Oh, Peter, I feel like you're, you're right there next to me. I'm driving and I feel like you're sitting right next to me chatting away. So it's it's very personal and, and quite intimate in that sense. And that's powerful too. That's reinforcing yes. the connection with the client um, yeah. in a really one-to-many way, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it, it doesn't take long to record a video. Um, so, and I did one this week and I thought I'd better practice what I preach because I, I'm going to do it in the easiest possible way. I just went and grabbed my new iPhone, pointed it and put it on that new uh, video mode 
Yep. And just did a one and a half minute video. And I was just introducing basically the content that I had underneath it. And that's what I'd recommend advisors do as well. You know, we supply yeah. a, lot of the, a lot of the content. They could just point and shoot, create a very small little video to say, hey, it's Peter here. Got some great news for you this week. Got a really nice little estate planning article here and another one on uh, life insurance. And hey, the third one, which I really recommend you see, is one on lifestyle tips for retirement. Yeah. That's all from me. Have a great week. And that's all they need to do. And like you said, they become so familiar mm. with you as the newsreader, like we do on the yeah. Channel 9 News. We, we turn it on, we become very familiar with that reader. So your clients can have the exact same feeling when they hear from you every month. Yeah, exactly. And there is also a, um, you know, there's, there's a great deal of trust um, that goes in in the financial advisor and client relationship. And so to hear your voice again, to have you measured, comfortable, confident, like all of these things is is sort of that conditional messaging, right? It's really sort of just just reinforcing you there. You're you're on the the wall for them. Um, you know, they can rely on you. I think those things we underrate that value because without it, there's a void, right? Between Yes, they might get the comms, but I do. I agree with you. There's you can really amplify the power of that tool um, just with a little bit of video, um, and then you guys can do all of the hard work of you know what are the articles this month, and you know what are we going to send out, and making sure it all looks good. I mean, all that stuff just it's just a black hole of time, isn't it? Just trying to do that yourself. So, so um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's talk about somebody you know practice that's new to the tool, and they're mm. and they're coming on board. You know, is there anything that you feel people should get done first? Like, is there any, I don't know, cleansing of a list or anything like that that you feel would be helpful before they embark on something something yeah. like um, using and Fiji? You've just, you just hit the nail on the head there, Peter, because getting their client list right or their CRM right, because that is the source of truth. Yeah. So that's where their file notes are. It's where their salutations are, their email addresses, all that type of thing. So the cleaner that list is, the better. Um because soon after they come on board with Feedsy, we'll actually ask them to uh, do an export and then just drag and drop that client list into Feedsy. And we can do that every month uh, or whenever they've got a, you know, a reasonable change in that, in that uh, in the client list. And every time it just overrides and updates yeah. uh, from the previous month and just adds those new people. Because um, we can never have a duplicate um, email address on file and within Feedsy. So it just keeps on adding the new people okay. and, and really does quarantine anyone that may have unsubscribed it protects those yep. but the cleaner that list the better the outcome because yeah. as you know a really clean beautiful list is going to mean that you're going to be addressing your clients to their first and well you know their salutation is right the husband and wife or you know the partners um and it's just beautiful like it's just when you've got data quality data it really has become seamless and is there is there an extent to which that's required too? I know, and it may not be the case for the way you guys um, send things out, but I do know that you know if your bounce rate is a bit high, or if if you know that sort of thing is a bit high for mm. for email, you know email campaigns, then it, you can get a bit penalised in terms of deliverability and stuff like that. Mm. So therefore, a cleaner list that you know you know that client is there <laughs> at that email, as opposed to gee. You know, we haven't spoken to them for a long time, but we've still got their details. Let's just add them to a list. Like, is there some approaches you would recommend um, in terms of who goes on the list and and making sure those details are up to date? Yeah, if we and we actually help with the client data too. So I say, just said that, hey, the cleaner the list, the better, but we do actually help them as well because we don't always find that. So we want to make it easy for the advisor. So if they've got uh, been using another program, we'll actually import all of their unsubscribes first. We protect what's happened historically. Yep. Um, if uh, they bring all their client data over and they want to start using salutations, it's just a matter of working that a little bit in Excel and giving them advice on how to update their CRM. Yep. Um, you've touched on a really important point with bounced emails and, and things like that we're getting through. So what we do there is we either ask uh, for their username and password to log on to their domain Yep. Or we send the instructions to their IT person. And either way, what we do is add a what's called a TXT record mm -hmm. to their domain. Uh, once that happens, it authenticates the email sending so that it's a trusted sender. Right. So that our email solutions are going direct to the ring box and yep. not getting a bounce rate. So that's really, really important. And it's probably not something that we talk about that often, apart mm. from when I'm actually with a client, but it's really important that it is more well-known because bounce rates, you know, and spam emails are bad. 
you yes. know, you've got to try and authenticate your, your domain. Um, and if you're sending bulk email messages, you don't want your primary domain to get flagged rather than sending normal emails either. Yeah, correct, correct. And it's um, yeah, it's something I've discovered the hard way because, we, you know, using our CRM, we had to go through that process. And and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but the other thing is it's it's the difference potentially between if somebody's, say, using like the G Suite and they, they use Gmail for their email, then it's the difference between being in the main inbox versus the promotion or the, or mm. the you know, the other categories it's going to categorize because if it's it's not so much that it may even be spam it's just that it's like yeah this just feels like it's just rubbish <laughs> you know so yes. versus it being something that's being confirmed um yes we know that's a real domain name we know like like those sort of things can just increase the likelihood of your client even seeing the email which of course is the first step um before even getting them to open it um yeah. of course now we, we treat that really seriously and we um really make sure the advisor is well aware of what we're doing and why we're doing it in terms of making their, because at the end of the day, we want to give them the biggest open rates and click-through rates as possible. Yep. Uh, and that's part of the demo that we do as well. We, we go through their own individual site as to what they're experiencing, you know, for their first first email to get those rates as high as possible. Perfect. Well, let's sort of, let's sort of touch on that. So, um, I'm sure everybody knows what open rates and click-through rates are, um, but, you know, so the open rate is literally who bothers to even take a look at the email itself, the content. Mm -hmm. um, there's sort of, there's a variety in what that definition really is, isn't there? It's a bit vague sometimes, depending on people have, you know, those little windows where they can see a bit of the email and sort of stuff. But generally, hey, somebody's opened it. Click-through rates, then, of course, them taking an action. What is some of the call to action? So what what are people clicking through to when they're getting the feeds e um, email as a client? Yeah, it's funny, um, there's, there's obviously some top articles there and mm -hmm. a lot of them are, um, we've got this new Feedsy exclusive feed, which is all about how to live better lives. Yep. And um, those at the moment are getting the, the biggest um, open rates. So yeah, it might okay. be um, living retirement without regret or the top 10 things you can be to be this cool parent or you yep. know, whatever it might be. So it's actually lifestyle type things. So we're getting a lot of those being read at the moment. Um, as opposed to uh, our news content, obviously is is there and is is great as well. But we're they're really hitting on those on those lifestyle ones. Um, in terms of other things, every now and then we we see that people are clicking on equities, or they are clicking on privacy links. So I'm not sure if there's a few compliance minded people within their their list, but we are finding some of those there. Uh, and also um, contact the contact link. So people are probably looking at that and then ringing the practice. Yep. Um, and that's probably one of the ideal things that advisors are experiencing out of getting a regular email. It might be unrelated to any of the content within the email, but they're actually replying or calling off the back of it simply because that advisor has kept in touch yep. with the client and they're showing the they are. And I think that's um, when something changes in their life, the client knows that their advisor is there to help them. Um, and sometimes they might be thinking, oh, I should call my advisor because this has happened. And then they wake up in the morning and think they need a new iPhone. So yeah. they, their mind goes off with something completely different. Yeah. And then the email hits. Oh, yeah, I've got a call. I've got to call my advisor. I better do yeah. that now. So um, that's that's where it happens. And funny enough, we, we get quite often uh, feedback from an advisor saying, oh, thanks so much for the, for the email this particular month. That would have taken you a long time to put together. And the, the advisor says to me, and I said, thanks. And I, because it did. <laughs> and uh, I said, good on you, because you should say thank you. It, it's yours. You know, take ownership yeah. over it um, yeah. because um, it is something you've invested in. You should feel proud of it. And it's great that your clients love it. So I love hearing feedback like that. Yeah, absolutely. And so then let's imagine, so, you know, the client clicks through, like there's an article, like, oh, really interested in that. They click through. Where are they? So they, are they going to the advisor's webs? Where are they actually going when they click through to something? Yeah. So when they click through, it can be a number of different ways we um, either link it direct to an advisor's blog on yep. their website which is actually hosted and everything on their on their blog so um, so it's actually going the content sits on their on the advisor site um, the other scenario is we create a, a subdomain where yep. it's all the the URL the whole link all looks like the advisor site is branded the advisor site they wouldn't know any difference but we're actually hosting the news page okay Okay, so that's so the other way they can click through to. But the very next link is like a contact us that will go through the other site. So we all, the traffic is always directed in either of those cases 
back to back the to website. The, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay yep. fantastic. And so if an advisor is looking to shore, sort of shore up their website beyond a a big business card, which, you know, it can feel a bit like that sometimes. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's not, it's not particularly dynamic. And, of course, with all of, you know, Google and all these things, SEO, all these sort of stuff changing, you know, dynamic um, updated content is is rewarded. So it sounds like then that, then by using Feedsy as the sort of um, provider of that content can sort of shore that up and it can be something that's getting updated regularly and, and you know, has new content available via the blog. Yeah, correct. And I think the, there's probably two elements that get updated constantly within the website is the content coming in mm -hmm. and also the testimonials coming in. So when you have a look at their testimonials, um, those that have, have adopted that approach, the, the testimonials are updated every day because there's a, a quarterly survey that goes out yeah. um, and the news articles are updated every week. So there's always regular content on there. So the site just looks alive with, with people's feedback, with uh, you know, up-to-date testimonials and just you know, nice content coming through looking fantastic. So. Um, yeah, it, it makes a site look, look alive and well. It's amazing how some a lot of advisors come to me and they think, okay, I really want to get my comms and that sorted, but my website is terrible. Um, I really need website help. Um, so I said, right, if that's a priority, let's start there. Okay. And we can help them build a, a new website. Um, so we do that first, and then we say, okay, now that you've built this big, beautiful website, how are you going to attract people to it? Yeah. Because people don't just find it. No. No, I know, and I think we all we all need to get over ourselves a bit to that extent. I think lots of us are like, oh, well, we've got to go to line because people are going to be searching, and we'll just come up. It's like no, like let's be real here. We're going to be directing people to it. Like this is this yeah. is our virtual home where people can check thing, check us out and get a good feel. And it might take them a few goes to be sent to that before they'll act. Um, but but I think we're a little naive if we're thinking that um, somebody's going to randomly find us. I think that's far less common than than people would like to think. Yeah, um, it's funny you say that because 12 years ago, Peter, I started in business and I built a website and I just thought, okay, as soon as this goes live, the phone's going to start phone ringing. ring. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't. So you don't build it and they, and they just come. It doesn't happen yeah. that way. You've got to work with it. You've got to do your socials. You've got to do your email outreach and all that sort of thing and, and promote yeah. what you're doing and tell your story and all yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. yeah. But I do like the idea, you know, I'm uh, the, the things that I realize um, we struggle, struggle is an exaggeration, but that uh, we never quite get to in a practice are the things that we don't just make part of the process. So to hear you, that you guys can also do that feedback grabbing the testimonials and it's just part of a process, you know, mm. is a great thing to just tick off. It's something we all need more of. I know, I know we need to do more of. So it's, it, it's nice to then have a way that that just happens. Somebody's just going to be doing that, you know, Yes. because <laughs> it is, it's, you know, we've got so many things we have to be across. Um, and if you are project managing every one of those things, something's going to fall off. It just, it's a matter of course. So, mm. so um, you know, depending for the listener, depending on where they're at, this could be a way to just tick that thing off. You know, you might have a practice manager in a dealer group or somebody saying you really need to get some testimonials happening. It's like, yeah, right, then this could be a great way, you know, combined with getting the newsletter and the content, you know, humming. This could just be a great way to get that in place and I know it's going to happen, um, you know. But some businesses are a little bit more cautious too, Peter, so they might not like the automated email going out every quarter. What they might prefer, and our system uh, allows every advisor to do this, they go into the back end of Feedsy and they tick a box as to when they would like that individual client to get the feedback email. Okay. And that might be after they've done an SOA or an yep. ROA. Okay, yep. I want to send this off now. And then the very next day, they'll get an email to say, how do we do? Yep. How likely are you to recommend us to family member or friend? So they get the same email, but they're actually triggered it manually rather than an auto response yeah, and once nice. they uh, get um, feel comfortable with it all, they, they then may up to automating it for all their clients but they can start slowly treat carefully and trust in your process yeah and it is that's a valid point i think it is um it's it is quite exposing to just ask everybody what they think like <laughs> Like I'm sure it'll be broadly good but you know we'll see but i mm. so i like the way that you can you can ease into that. Um, and and to be fair also, you know, getting top of mind feedback is valuable. Like they've literally just experienced a bit of an in-depth process. Um, then the feedback then would probably be a little more specific. You know? mm. uh, and I think that's the other thing I like. And, and it's 
it's only been sort of watching my own reaction to restaurant testimonials. So Mm -hmm. I'm a foodie and and I almost never go to a good restaurant without going online, checking out, you know, the Google reviews, that sort of stuff. And the worst testimonials are, you know, great food, great atmosphere. I'm like, that is useless. (laughs) That doesn't tell me anything. Um, whereas the oh, you've got to check check out the deep fried chicken on the whatever with the little like like the the more detailed um, the feedback or testimonial, the more valuable it is and useful, you know, for other people. Uh, so I'm sure that that you get a bit more of that when it's closer to a, a an experience or a process. True, because you, yeah, and I think the um, it can be very well positioned from the advisor too, because they might say as soon as someone says thank you. It's the opportunity to ask yeah. for feedback or a you know, potential referral. But they might sort of say, um, oh, thank you, you know, oh, that's so good. I can really see my retirement goals coming to fruition now. And they say, oh, I'm really glad you feel that way. Is it okay if I send you a little survey tomorrow which just goes through your experience and perhaps rate us in terms of how likely you would be to yeah. talk, speak highly of us? Is that yeah. okay if I send that? And I go, yeah, sure. So you just go into the back end of the page and trigger it. And there you go, they, they give you the feedback. So it's a nice. Um, nice way to position it, but then you've got this way of capturing that chronically or capturing that in a social sense yep. so you can share and help you grow to get more clients. Yeah, exactly. And I think mm. um, the, the other thing that I'd say for anybody that's sort of running a practice out there um, as opposed to is an advisor within it, um, then, you know, one of the things you could do to – to make this happen. So one of the things that's a struggle when you've got a practice and you've got a few advisors is you might say, hey, we've got this great thing and we'd love you to do it. But actually getting people (laughs) to send it to their clients or to use it is like pulling teeth. So, you know, don't be shy setting a KPI of a certain number of testimonials they've got to ask for a month, right? I mean, hey, we need five from you a month. Like they should be doing a lot more SOAs and ROAs than that a month. So Mm. look, we need at least this many. Now, if you'd only need a few advisors in your practice to be doing that, every month just as a matter of course and you will rapidly collect a whole lot of testimonials but they'll still be in control you know and feel more comfortable about it because they're choosing who um yes. so i think that could be a powerful combination um but yeah I've, there's a particular person that i love catching up with and he and i wax lyrical all the time about um you know the the great idea isn't isn't the first you know isn't the final step it's actually getting it to flow through in the practice and people to actually <laughs> use it that can yeah. be the challenge and we, we provide this um, you know, designated page, if you like, Peter, with, um, with all your testimonials on there, and it's a nice little link. Now, that link can be on the bottom of your email footer of every email you ever sent. Nice. And it might have a little link or comment saying, hey, don't just take our word for it. You know, read what other clients are saying about us here. Or it might be a, a pre-appointment um, email that comes in to say, hey, you know, looking forward to seeing you. Don't forget to bring X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, but... In the meantime, why don't you have a look at what other people are saying, yeah. clients just like you. you know, yeah. So they can go to this page and, and read about all the nice things that um, other clients are saying about them. Lovely, lovely. Now let's talk about integrations. Is that something you guys need to or have done? Do you integrate with any other tools or do you do you recommend people stand alone? How does that work? Yeah, a good question on the integrations. We, I guess we call it a, a soft integration. It's not a... Um, a real coded one, but we, you know the, the ultimate is to have one CRM. Um, yes. CRMs are quite often hard to get a full integration with. Yep. But um, CRMs like WorkSorted um, and XPlan, what we can do, they've got a like a designated WorkSorted or XPlan email that you can actually blind copy in to, as, yep. as a file note. Um, and our system, and that's probably just two CRMs that we we do do, but we can just blind copy an email. And mm-hmm. the newsletter would go to the client's um, okay. account, yeah, okay. if you like it. So they've got the file note depicted there. Um, but I guess in terms of every every page that we put online, uh, yeah. all integrates beautifully with your social. So uh, a practice yeah. or the clients of a practice can very easily share the content. So all those buttons are embedded on every story. Okay. And the practice can go in, just hit the Facebook link. It integrates and shares it beautifully. Um, you know, through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and they can use all the links uh, to, to schedule through Hootsuite and things like that as well. 
Nice, nice. So is there anything either that was like a ninja user that's just gone like, wow, they've really gone to town and taken advantage or or <laughs> conversely something they're like, I can't believe nobody uses this more often. Like are there any of those elements of the tool? Yeah, probably I can answer that in probably two elements. I think where um, users have really gone to the nth degree and uh, really using it to streamline what they do. One is probably on the video. And I would just probably quote what one of the particular advisor is doing. He wasn't comfortable in filming himself necessarily, yep. but he wanted to relate what the markets are doing to an 80s video clip. So he would go through and um, find the YouTube video. And I think during the lockdown of COVID, he found mm-hmm. never ending story. And he put that on there. And then he spoke about the markets and about lockdown, and about what it meant and things like that. And he was getting amazing open rates because he let his sense of humor go and yeah. injected that into his comms, wonderful. And he had, uh, you know, it didn't take massive amount of time, but it was a novel idea that he injected into his emails. Really, really cool. I actually look forward to, I look forward to, to receiving those each and every month. I'm sure his clients did too. Yeah. The other one is we can set up a, a journey, like an email journey, where it might be a, a review date in our system, very similar to a birthday, it just mm-hmm. triggers a nice birthday message. We can do that. But on a review situation, they might have a Calendly invite there and they might have all their clients with a review date. Yep. Um, since there are probably three different journeys in there to say, did you open? Yes, no. Uh, did you click on a link? Yes, no. And it goes through and actually just helps them book times with their, with their clients. Um, so it could be along that line, but it doesn't just have to be renewal date. It could be anything marketing related to say, I want to send out a piece of content to people and there might be three or four or 10 different emails in that to add value to a specific client segment to educate right. them. Right. So we can do email journeys um, yeah, if they really okay. want to get down the, the path of educating their clients. And that's over and above the, the regular monthly email newsletter. Okay. And so let's talk through that then. So the, the email journeys, like I'm, what I'm hearing is sort of like choose the, like those daggy choose your own adventure books that I used to love where, you know, based on what page you picked, it took you on a different journey. So let's say they got the email and maybe they clicked on something. So it's taking them to, you know, that there's another email that might come through. Um, do they, are they able to therefore see that happening so that they can sort of get a sense that maybe somebody's diving deeply into some estate planning stuff? Well, like they can get a really good sense if somebody's continuing, you know, engaging in that journey. So it's not um, probably a good bit clear. It's not an AI sort of, um, you know, based on what a reader might be using. Sure. So we don't go down that path, but there might be, um, you know, five, six, seven uh, predetermined emails and we've got yep. like a bit of a pipeline of content. Yep. And then what we can happen is see where people might be in that pipeline and yep. how many open and click-through rates and who they were as they go through that, awesome. that pipeline of content. Um, so they can sort of determine um, that people are engaging with it. So every one of those emails would have an open and click-through rate on them. Yeah, and it's an interesting... It's a bit counterintuitive because when we talk about um, newsletters, often we're thinking like there's the, you know, there's a, a couple of lumps. I don't know how many you normally have, but I don't know, three to five sort of broad topics or whatever it is, um, mm. you know, in a newsletter. Whereas um, sometimes with something like this that you're talking about where it's this journey, maybe it's a series of five emails, one after the, you know, one after the other drip fed out, um, then those actually being shorter and punchier could be quite powerful, you know, so somebody can grasp something, a single concept quickly. Mm. Um, and have knocked it off quickly and then, you know, we'll, oh, and you'll get the next one tomorrow or whatever the, whatever the journey is, whatever you're designing it for. Um, I actually, I engage with those quite well. And in fact, M from Ensemble does those really well. So she'll just, hey guys, you know, this was the conversation happening in this, you know, channel on the community. It's it's a brief introduction. It's super short. Either you click through or you don't, you know, like it's a really easy thing. There's no scrolling or, you know, so it's yes. an interesting, you know, using both methods because they will appeal to different people in different stages. Um, so it's, yeah, the, the journey thing makes a lot of sense um, as a yeah, different way to engage. I suppose the other thing we, we can do when the, some of the advanced users have got more segments within their client data and we import those, and they can, you know, very easily send a campaign out to accumulators or retirees. So we've got all that broken down. But if they've got to, one of those fields might be advisor name, they've got five or six advisors in their business, we can customize that advisor name and use it almost as a mail merge right. into the email. And that then allows anything else to be mail merge, much like we did with our Word documents years ago to say, <laughs> yeah. insert merge field here, we can 
make it quite personal, but in a digital way on a on an email newsletter. Yeah, which is great too. I think it's um, you know, it's hard. It's it's and I, I'm just reflecting actually because we all get you know, and once we're in a practice, we all get loads of provider emails, whether it's the platform or fund managers or insurers or whatever they are, and and there's nothing stranger than getting one from the CEO. I mean, they do, I, I get why they're doing it because they're putting importance on it, but it seems a bit weird. Like that CEO doesn't know who I am. <laughs> yeah. Whereas if it's the person I'm dealing with, you know, and you can see their name and you know who they are, that once again feels more personal. Yeah. You know, that feels and we can more... merge that into the email title as well um, nice. and from all that sort of thing, just to make it, it's all about being, you know, custom, make it, uh, you know, friendly yep. um, and to come from a trusted source, which is, you know, your financial advisor. Yeah, fantastic. So what's on the development, like what's coming up? You know, what are the things that, that are either, you know, definitely on the development path or release path? And are there any mm-hmm. things way down the track that you're, oh, I'd love to be doing this? You know, that's something that, that's a bit more pie in the sky, but that you're excited about. Yeah, we've, we've just launched a couple of really exciting things, which I love at the moment. I mean, design, we've, we've updated all of our templates, which look really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we quite often get asked, I say quite often, we, we do get asked about specific content to say, Steve, I wish I would, I would love to see more self money super fund articles or a estate right. planning article or whatever it might be. So we've actually opened up a portal on our website where a buyer can have a, a closer two way relationship with, with me, say, for example, because mm-hmm. I've been picking a lot of that content. But if an advisor wants a, something specific, they can put an idea, a content request through our website, we'd go and write it, and it'll go back to them. Okay. We can either do that on a one-to-many basis, which doesn't cost anything. We just get yep. their ideas out to the community or a one-on-one basis where we just write a piece of content for, them. for that practice. So that's just been launched. But uh, I guess what we are looking at now, we talked about um, the client feedback or the survey type questions where, hey, what do you like about us? Rate it between one and 10 and we give you business a net promoter score. We do all that, but we don't do it by text messaging. So I think content, out by text wouldn't work. I don't, I don't no. like that idea. But in relation to client you know, feedback from a business, hey, rate us between one and ten. What do you like? And give us a few comments. I yeah. think that would work really well by text. Yeah. So okay. that's where we're sort of going going next. Almost like like Messenger, like those like a bot when you do messages, yeah. use Messenger for that same thing. Mm. So it's sort of just asking, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And and if it means they can do it straight away and that feels a bit easy and um, you might increase the number of responses perhaps. Um, yeah, and we can auto do that as well. So we've got yeah. all the mobiles in the in the system. It might be after an appointment, a text message is sent the day after um, instead of an email. So yeah. it's just giving advisors that, that particular option. Yeah, awesome. And so, look, is there any, we've covered a fair bit. Is there anything we've missed? Any elements of what you guys do that we've missed, do you think? I think we have pretty well um, covered everything, but I think probably just a, one switch probably like to, to leave you with. We had to, and this is all about client feedback, Peter, yeah. and what it can mean for an advisor. Because we had a um, situation where it was um, around the, the COVID, or just pre COVID, around the COVID time anyway, where yeah. licenses were changing. Um, a lot of businesses were closing for various reasons. And a financial advisor came to me and said, you know what, I am um, feeling really depressed, bad about what I'm doing. I, I can't see a way forward and things like that. And I said, how about just stop um, paying us for a period of time? And when you're ready, I would like to show you pretty awesome, pretty special. Um, so he came back uh, probably six months after and he said, oh, I'm ready to sort of start back again. I said, okay, let's survey your clients and we did that and all these really positive feedback came back Mm -hmm. and he got you know you're a great advisor you're a great person you take a care on us you're in all these sorts of things and he said read them all and he thought wow for the first time in a long time i'm actually proud to be an advisor and that's really given me some steam full steam to to get out there again and to see people and to see clients and that meant meant the world to me because we had we played a small part in him feeling good about being an advisor again, and the best people to tell, to tell that story are your own clients. Yeah, you know, there's no no one more meaningful than that that sort of real positive feedback and uh, humble feedback than, than coming from your own customers. So that was a really good story about what we're doing in terms of um, you know, testimonials and feedback back to a, an advisor. 
And I and and to that point, um, you know, when we're we're asking for that feedback, talking about the rest of the team, I think is important too. You know, sometimes the person that stands out really is the admin person that took them through a, you know, mm. whatever the process is post or some difficulty they had and they solved it. Or you know, like everybody deserves that wonderful feedback, um, and it feels great. And you're right. I mean, gee, we felt be- beaten up for a long time. So. Oh. Yeah, it's some know, really it's, tough times there. And, exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, that ecosystem yeah. sort of played a small part in, in helping advisors through that time. And yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it's, it's really important, isn't it? And I think, you know, everybody needs a virtual hug uh, once in a while. Yeah. And so, you know, why not um, let your clients do that? Um, you know, we, and particularly if you own your own business, I don't think we're necessarily good at that stuff because we're individual, like the the mere fact that we do start our own business sort of has an individuality to it. You know, we sort of fall mm. forward. We're probably not great at getting that sort of positive reinforcement or asking for it. So I think I like that idea as a way to reinforce yourself and even your team and go, look, we're, we're on the right track here. We're really adding value. Like let's, let's keep on, let's keep, keep at this. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I love that, that idea. Alrighty, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Feedsy, then the website link is in the sh- episode show notes along with Steve's LinkedIn details. So feel free to reach out to him and I'm sure he can point you in the right direction or or set up a demo, whatever is most appropriate. Um, thank you so much for joining, joining us on the show. Um, it's been great to get an update on where you guys are at and all of the different layers of the practice you can impact uh, and, and really helping advisors sort of plow through that barrier of content and engagement with their clients on an ongoing basis so thank you so much right thank you so much too peter and it's wonderful to speak with you again as it always has been it's uh, awesome so and, and great it's to see your too smiling long. face yeah <laughs> too long. yeah so are you a current user of feedsy you know are you finding it's just taking the pressure off you know that there's content going out to your clients there's a newsletter it's happening um and you find even if they don't necessarily react to a specific um, piece of content. It's more that you're top of mind and when something com- comes up, they remember you. Uh, if that's the case, you know, reach out on the Ensemble Community Platform and share your experience, what worked for you, what didn't work, what other tips you'd give advisors as, you know, this is all about crowdsourcing ideas and solutions. So please be sure to share your thoughts. Now, as for my take on this, look, the first thing I'd say is, um, you know, a few uh, episodes ago, we talked to financial writers, and that was, was, of course, getting the content yourself, but then you distributing it however you wanted to distribute it, whereas this is um, getting the content, but also having somebody that the then distributes it for you. And so these are all just layers of outsourcing or automation. And it just depends on for you, how busy you are, how busy the practice is, what's going to work, what's best for you. Um, but you know, better to have something going out than nothing at all. And sometimes, um, and Steve and I were chatting offline actually before we hit record that, you know, sometimes we can get in our own way by doing all these things ourselves. And, you know, that can be a mistake. Um, You could use a tool like this over time and then gradually add your own flavor. And, you know, to the point of adding your own flavor, you know, we, you may find that you're a bit concerned about, robo tools or robo advice or, you know, online or all these things that are coming up that you feel may challenge um, our businesses or our industry as a whole. And the thing that we have that robo doesn't is being human, right? And the best way to capture being human is video. Uh, It's the thing that is toughest to fake or to um, imply or to make generic, right? So uh, even just having that intro short video to each newsletter that goes out um, that you could do sitting at your computer like I am now, I'm recording this sitting at my desk, um, you could very quickly knock off a video that could just be the intro to this month's newsletter um, and could just create that personal connection and deepen that personal connection for your clients. So I'd really encourage you to certainly embark on better and more consistent content for your clients and for your leads, but also consider ways that you can then just add your element of curation or or your flavor to it that just makes it more and more um, your style and, and connects them more deeply with you. Now, as you know, there's only one skill we need to become Bionic Advisors. Those of you that have been listening since the beginning will know what that is. It's avid curiosity. We just need to be super duper 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 
curious. And so to help you to continue to build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner app that I wanted to take a look at is called Blink. That's Blink with a Q rather than a K. Uh, you can look at blink.me, that's B-L-I-N-Q dot me. And their tagline is the easiest way to share your details. Now, all of us are just getting out and about more now, aren't we? We're all going to industry events or we might be going to networking events to interact with people that might become clients. And so Blink can uh, provide you with a dis- digital business card. So it can be on your phone, have your details, all the different ways they can get in touch with you. can even have a sample of, you know, a, an article you've written in LinkedIn or a downloadable or like all of those sort of links can be in there and you interact with somebody. Oh, I'd love to keep in touch. Blink provides a QR code they can quickly scan uh, and then your details get uploaded into their contact uh, record. Uh, and They can even tick and say, yes, happy to have my details sent back to them. So it's this really quick and easy way um, to interact with details. Now, if you weren't aware, LinkedIn actually has a similar ability. There is a QR code for your LinkedIn profile you can use when you're at events, but all that does is connect you via LinkedIn, whereas Blink has, of course, your mobile number, your website, all sorts of other details can be included uh, in the sort of little QR code they create so that all of that, all of those details are there. Uh, And you can take it even further and they can create for you um, a wonderful email uh, footer, email signature that's quite dynamic, looks really good, but based on those same details um, that can, uh, you know, be at the bottom of your email, whether you're using um, Gmail or Outlook, you know, a pretty sure that they, yeah, they do. They interact with Outlook and even Apple Mail. So um, this could just be a great way to get, you know, your details, the best way to get in touch with you and maybe even highlight uh, a popular article you wrote or a YouTube video you did. So um, I'd encourage you to check it out. It might just um, make that um, interacting and getting people's details thing super easy, bit of fun and a talking point. Um, So uh, check it out and let me know what you think. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And I would love to hear um, other tech providers you'd like me to interview, uh, things that you think are really working or that you're just sort of wondering what they're about and aren't sure. And you'd like Peter D to go and interview them to work it out. Um, I'd love to hear about your ideas. So please feel free to reach out to me either on the Ensemble community platform or or on LinkedIn. Um, and if I can perhaps provide some, you know, further content via a lunch and learn or some topic, uh, I've, you know, I've recently did one on client portals that um, helped a few people out, then please reach out uh, and I'd love to add some value where I can. Uh, otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, Advice Explorers, stay curious.